All right, so I have apparently developed myself a handyman reputation around my campus, presumably due to uh, how often I volunteer to fix broken things in there. So uh, today, my classmate handed me this after class. He told me that this is his personal desk fan and it is no longer working. He tried to uh, fix it himself, but to no avail. And uh, this is the first time I've seen it after uh, removing it from the plastic bag where it uh, was housed in. Um, as you can see, the wires are all cut up for some reason. Um, this is another one of that uh, super cheap desk fans, like the Nico I filmed uh, a few weeks earlier. But the difference is this one is branded Profan. So uh, I don't know what the problem is with this. It told me that it suddenly stopped working. So let's give it a check and see where the problem is. Um, the bearings is the bearings are fine. So there's that. So let's whip out the multimeter. So since everything has already been neatly taken apart, I currently have this motor assembly here. Uh, by itself so that I can do testing with it without the obstruction of any of the plastic parts like this rear cover here. Um, actually let's reference the switch positions. So you want to so it is a two-speed fan and he didn't me he didn't give me a knob for uh, for this fan so I'm using this the knob that I got from the uh, from the scrapyard window air conditioner. So, well, it is proven itself to be useful. So, if referencing from here, this should be off. This is speed one, and it's, it, this is speed number two. Okay. Let's turn this on. Set it to ohms and do some testing. So this is, if I remember right from the Nico surfacing, this is the power wire for the motor. So I'll twist this lead on here. And actually let's check that my meter is good first. And it is. So, this is one of the speed tabs right here, the white wire. Let's check to here. Okay, here's connection. And the black wire here has not been stripped, but I think I can fit my multimeter in here. Okay, so there is connection in both the white wire and the black wire. Let's check if there is any leak to ground. Nothing. Uh, Check here, something. Okay, there is no leak to ground. Let's now check the switch itself. So this is the, uh, hang on. Hmm. I believe this should be the tab where the power comes in. So, connected in here and let's check this okay continuity previous speed nothing and this lead by the way uh, the what wire here there's a connection hmm so it appears that there's actually nothing wrong with this fan here so what I'm going to do now is Check the power cord itself to see if it has connection. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Hmm, hang on. <clears throat> Let's check that the connection is good. And 
the uh, meter up. All right, let's check again. Nothing. Nothing. All right. Now let's check the blue wire. Oops. Nothing. Something. So it appears that the power cord itself is broken, which <laughs> interesting not, uh, interestingly enough is the hunch that I had with the Nico Death fan. Um, on this fan here, I thought the problem was on the motor itself, that the motor is burned out. But it appears that the power cord is bad. So let's connect uh, this wire spec on and let's see that uh, if the motor actually works or not. So, be back in a bit. Okay, so I have this motor here hooked up to a used but good power cord. And this is currently connected to 110 volts because I don't want to uh, <laughs> be in any risk of shock. Um, so, here goes nothing. So this should be off, yeah. And please don't blow up. Okay, so it is working and it is oscillating. The other speed. All right. So yeah, it is. It appears that the power cord is actually bad on this. I'm curious to see where the uh, broken connection is though. Um, later I'll cut around this area to see whether uh, this cable itself is actually good because this plug here is pretty small. I mean, let's plug this in here. It doesn't fill the whole hole here. This is super small. So, yeah, this motor here is good, so I'm going to turn this off and give it some oil. Uh, we organize the wirings because I currently have this thing all wire netted together temporarily, and yeah. All right, so before I oil it, I feel like I should mention this problem here. Um, <clears throat> I spotted that the uh, power cord here is not uh, secured in by anything and it is rubbing this uh, oscillator arm. So uh, my solution is to uh, wire tie it to, wire tie the cable to the oscillating arm itself so that it won't rub out. But I actually see another problem here that the wires is now rubbing even more. So um, what I'm probably going to do is uh, coat the wires here in a bit of tape and then double zip tie it on the oscillator arm. So let's do that. All right, the problem appears to have been solved. The wire is no longer uh, moving or sliding in, uh, and contacting anything. And it is fastly secured on the oscillator arm, but with this double zip tie method, which I learned from the channel uh, HVACR videos. So this should last a lot longer. Okay, let's go to oiling. So here is a easy way to oil your fan if you are a lazy person, like I am right now. I don't want to uh, open this up because if you see here from the top of the motor, um, let's get a pointing device. Uh, here it is. You can see the shaft here. That's the motor shaft. Uh, you can also slide the shaft here back and you can access the front here. What you do is you take your oiler, which for my case is this, my trusty Singer oil, and you use this uh, narrow tip on the oiler itself and let's zoom in what you do is you take the tip of your oiler insert it in between this rotor here see this part that spins between this rotor 
and this bearing holder here. If you can see the silver part there, that is the shaft, you oil it right there. And you also want to oil the surroundings so that um, the wick around the bearing or bushing soaks up the oil and it lasts a lot longer. You can also oil it from the front like this. Pull the shaft backwards and forwards to uh, spread the oil. And do the same thing to the back. Um, I'll have to flip this. Here we go. So take the tip of your oiler, bring it in like this. And oil on the shaft and around it. Push the uh, shaft back and forward and it should be a lot more free. All right, now let's reassemble. All right, so I have everything back together and it is plugged in and I've been trying to see this fan run. So with this knob here, it is very loose. Let's turn it to speed number one, which I think is low. Okay, so like the Nico desk fan I fixed prior to this, this is a very, very cheap fan, but the airflow is actually not too bad. I believe the Nico desk fan moved more air than this. Um, this feels rather weak, but for a very cheap desk fan, you cannot really complain. Um, let's crank it up and see what it does. Okay, so that's a not too bad of a jump between the speed. This regards the airflow. It is still rather weak. Not sure if you can get a view of this bleed uh, pitch. I did see it earlier, but it's not. It's nothing to uh, write home about. It's pretty shallow. Nah, you cannot see it. So now let's check the uh, spin down. Okay, so not too bad. Right, that's good. Okay, so now that the fan is back and running, I'm going to check where the problem lies on this power cord. I can see that the wire here is uh, has a bit of a kink to it. Presumably it was uh, tied like this as train relief on the fan itself, but um, actually let's actually test this part first. I'm going to cut this open. So the part that's kinked is no longer here. So now let's slice the cable here, being extremely careful because this cable here is very, very thin. And I don't want to damage my table. Um, can I open this? Nope, not deep enough. All right, let's cut it again. Why is it not working? Um, okay, I'm being a little, a little bit more aggressive now. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, here we go. <clears throat> Got it open. <clears throat> My throat's being a bit annoying today. Okay. Let's cut this part off, don't need it. And let's trip the wires. Okay, that's good. Let's bring my multimeter back in. 
and see whether this uh, whether the problem lies on the kink part or the plug itself. All right, I have disconnected, and let's check. Okay, there's connection here. I think if I remember correctly, the blue wire always had connection. It's the black wire that's a problem. Yeah, it's a black wire. Okay, so let's check it again. Oops. It's connected to the black wire. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. So I'm going to cut this off. It's not a loss to me. Snip. Box cutter. Slice this open. And let's see if the wire, uh, the problem actually lies within this plug here. So remember, the uh, the broken connection is at the what the uh, the black wire. I was going to say the white wire, but there is no white wire here. Right? So it's connected to the black wire. Now let's test. Yep. Oh, you cannot see that. <laughs> here you go. So there is connection. Oh. There is actually connection on this part to this. So what's broken on this fan is actually at this. I believe there's a broken connection either right on the twisty bit here or actually within this uh, cast rubber part. So it's actually not this kink part as well. So that is really interesting. Okay, so uh, this fan is good now. You can't see that. <laughs> this fan is good, so it's fixed. And as always, uh, I thank you for watching and take care.